Today, I have a different type of video for you and I hope you enjoy it. We're gonna talk about the topic of global health. As you probably know, I teach English as a second language at a college in California. At the high level of English that they're learning, they learn English by learning about important topics. When my students are learning English this way, it works really well because they're doing two things at the same time. They're learning and practicing English and they're learning about important topics that can help them to improve their knowledge and maybe even improve their lives. So for example, when they learn about the topic of global health, they learn new vocabulary, they practice reading, they practice their writing, and they do speaking activities all about the same topic. And in that case, they're improving their English at a high level, but they're also learning new and interesting information about an important topic. So today I'm going to take you along on this lesson about global health and I do hope you enjoy it. Please let me know what you think and be sure to stay until the end of the lesson because I'm going to ask you a question then. And I also want to tell you that I will leave some links to related articles and videos in the description box below. So if you want to learn more about this topic, you can. When we think about global health around the world today, there are many things that we can talk about. We can think that we have this topic of global health and there are many controlling ideas that we can think of. Um, for example, we could look at ways to improve health or new medicines or health problems. And in today's video, I'm just gonna focus on trends in global health around the world now. And a trend is like the way that things are changing. So one trend that we can think of is about life expectancy. Life expectancy is the average age that a person can expect to live. And life expectancy is going up around the world. And it's been going up for the last several decades. We can notice this trend of increasing life expectancy by looking at the data. And in this case, the data would be the life expectancy numbers for different countries. And as I mentioned before, those numbers are going up all over the world. If we look at the United States, for example, the life expectancy is 79. So that means that the average person will live to be 79 years old. Some people live longer, some people live shorter lives, but the average person will live to be about 79. Now, there are differences in life expectancy between developed and developing countries. So let's take a moment to talk about those two types of countries. Developed countries are maybe what you might think of as rich or wealthy countries. And those are countries that have a developed um, system. For example, they have a developed education system. They have developed infrastructure with clean water, good roads, um, good uh, electricity. Um, people have the basic things that they need, good hospitals, schools, etc. Developing countries, on the other hand, are countries that are still developing. And developing countries, I don't like to call them poor countries, or sometimes people may say third world countries. And the reason I don't like to use that term is because a lot of developing countries actually are countries that are becoming rich, but they are still developing in some ways. So the reasons that life expectancy is increasing around the world, there are many reasons, but one of them is more vaccines. Another one is better medical treatment and uh, better medicines. Um, another one is that people have more access to clean water. Another one is that there are more ways of preventing infectious diseases and people are learning more about how to do that. 
But life expectancy tends to be longer in developed countries because people have better access to health care. Often people are better educated about how to prevent disease. And there are fewer problems with things like infectious disease or contaminated water. In developing countries, life expectancy is shorter for a variety of reasons, but a lot of those could be um, poor infrastructure, which means that people don't have a lot of access to clean water or safe roads. Um, also, there tends to be more infectious diseases. In many of these developing countries, there's also the problem of a lack of good hospital equipment or a lack of good healthcare workers. And I'll talk about that problem in more detail in a moment. Also, in some of these countries, children suffer a lot from infectious diseases or from um, diseases that cause diarrhea in young children, children that are younger than five years old. And so the number of children who die at a young age brings the life expectancy of the country down. You can check your country's life expectancy, and I will leave a link below that you can use to check that. Um, but if you're curious, Hong Kong and Japan currently have the highest life expectancy in the world with about 85. And that means that the average person lives to be about 85 years old. That's pretty high. The United States is number 46 in the world with a life expectancy of 79. So that surprises some people because out of all the countries in the world, the United States really is not so high in life expectancy. And the lowest life expectancy is in the Central African Republic with 54.3. Another point about life expectancy is about gender. Women live longer than men. Typically, women live two to three years longer than men. And there are many reasons for this, but one of them is that women have a stronger immune system than men do. I recently learned about this because of the coronavirus, which kills more men than women. Another important trend that we can see around the world concerns infectious diseases. Infectious diseases are diseases that are spread or that you can catch. So for example, you can catch an infectious disease from another sick person or from a source like contaminated water or a surface or from mosquitoes which can carry infectious diseases like malaria. Infectious diseases are actually improving or the number is going down around the world for a few reasons. Um, some of them are that more people have access to clean water nowadays. Um, there are more treatments for infectious diseases. We have more and better vaccines. And um, people just have a better quality of life now that um, the middle class is growing in a lot of developing countries. Of course, nowadays COVID is the exception. But let's see a few examples of other infectious diseases. Um, the common cold and the flu are very common infectious diseases. HIV AIDS and hepatitis. Cholera, which comes from contaminated water. Malaria and dengue fever, which are spread by mosquitoes. So those are examples of infectious diseases. And infectious diseases tend to be a bigger problem in developing countries. But as I mentioned before, they are improving now that there are more ways to prevent them and better treatments for people who do get them. A related trend concerns non-communicable diseases. So if you think about diseases, you can think that we have two types. We have infectious diseases that you can catch or contract from a source. And then we have non-communicable diseases which you don't catch from someone. Non-communicable diseases are diseases like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and Alzheimer's disease. And these diseases develop um, either because of lifestyle or genetics, meaning that a person can um, pass the gene for this disease um, to their children um, or for other reasons, but they're not diseases that you can catch from something. So NCDs or non-communicable diseases are usually a much bigger problem in developed countries. And the reason for that is that in developed countries, people work hard and they have a really like fast lifestyle. So there's more stress. 
people feel more anxious. People have often a sedentary lifestyle, which means that they sit a lot during the day and exercise less. But often these diseases are preventable. And so nowadays people have more knowledge and education about how to prevent these diseases. So in developed countries, the number of NCDs, um, I'm not sure and I have looked for data, but I think that the number of NCDs is going down in developed countries, or at least it's probably not going up. But in developing countries, now we see a lot more NCDs than we used to in the past. So in developing countries, why do more people have these non-communicable diseases now? like heart disease or cancer. So there are many reasons, but some of them are the, um, the effect of air pollution. Also, more people are smoking and more people have what we might call desk jobs or jobs where you sit more, like sort of the American um, style of jobs. Um, also, more unhealthy foods are coming there, you know, fast food and foods that are high in fat, sugar, and salt. And those unhealthy foods can contribute to NCDs. And if you notice, um, the rate of obesity or being very overweight is increasing in many countries around the world. So the growing rate of NCDs in developing countries is a huge problem. And the reason for that is that developing countries don't have the healthcare system to deal with um, these growing numbers of NCDs. Often their hospitals are not equipped with the right equipment or they don't have access to a lot of the medicines or they don't have a lot of doctors who specialize in these diseases. But another reason that there's such a problem is that NCDs tend to be chronic. So what we mean by chronic, when you have a chronic problem, is that it's a problem that lasts for the long term. It's ongoing or nonstop. And NCDs tend to be chronic, which means that they're very expensive to treat. For example, if a person has diabetes, they can have diabetes for many years and they need to be treated and um, take medicine, and this lasts for a long time. Also, a lot of developing countries are lacking the kinds of um, specialized hospitals or programs like we have in the US that work specifically on cancer or surgeons that are specialized in heart disease. Another related problem is something called brain drain. What this is, is when um, very highly educated people like doctors um, leave their country and move to a richer country because in that richer country they can get a better salary and better working conditions. So what happens in a lot of developing countries is that the healthcare system is already not very strong and then a lot of the doctors or other healthcare workers will leave and work in countries where they can have better conditions. The final trend I want to talk about is about smoking. So the number of people who smoke has been going down steadily in, develop, in developed countries. And at the same time, the number of smokers is increasing in developing countries. So one of the reasons for this is that tobacco companies are very um, sly. And when they noticed that the number of smokers was going down in developed countries, they started to target developing countries with advertisements. And also, um, this is a problem in developing countries because smoking leads to heart disease and certain types of cancer. And those NCDs will probably continue to increase in developing countries until people become more educated about that problem and quit. That has definitely been a change that I've seen in the United States during my lifetime. I remember when I was younger, a lot of people smoked, but nowadays the number of smokers is really quite low and there's a stigma against smoking, meaning that people look down on it or people think that it is um, you know, something bad. So the number of smokers has definitely been decreasing here. I think that's enough for today. I hope that during this talk, um, you are also thinking about your own country. So I would love to know um, about your country, where you live. What are some of the health problems in your country? Is your country a developed or a developing country? 
So let me know in the comments below some of your experiences. I will also leave some key vocabulary, links to other articles and videos, and a question for you in the description box below. And as always, I really appreciate your support, so if you could give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos, and leave a comment, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.